So let us uh, now understand the Varna system. Given that from 27 we, we have come to 6, now we have to reduce it to 4. So let us see how to reduce this to 4. Now what is happening? These are the 6 scenarios. From the other table I have brought this. These are the 6 scenarios. Scenario 1, Sattva is very high followed by Rajas and Tamas is almost non-existent because it is just point 0.1. I mean, this point, don't worry about point 0.1. It can be anything. You just understand dominant, reasonable existence and feeble existence. That's meaning of. So remove these 60, 30, 10 and replace it with dominant, active existence and feeble existence like that. Scenario two, Sattva is very high, no Rajas, Tamas is very high. In fact, if you read Guna theory, if you understand this Guna, it has this uh, dominance must be contiguous. It cannot be non-contiguous. You cannot have uh, 60 and 30 separated by something in between the two. That's not possible because these, these Gunas have a certain continuity. You know, it one grows on the other, the other grows on the other and so on like that. So the second scenario is simply not possible. Third scenario is possible. Because there is contiguity between 30 and 60. And Ayu Shankara clearly said, Shankaracharya said, in, in Kshadriyas, Rajas is very high, followed by, and it, it pushes Sattva a little down. So that's what is happening in this scenario 3. And scenario 4 is again Shankaracharya's definition. It says Rajas is very high, it pushes Tamas a little bit down. So by logic, Sattva is very little. And scenario 5 is not possible because they are non contiguous. The dominant and the next dominant are non-contiguous. That is not possible. And finally, you have the last one, which is possible because the dominant and the next dominant are contiguous to each other. But there, Tamas is very high and uh, Rajas is uh, the next. Tamas pushes uh, Rajas a little bit down and Sattva is very, very insignificant. So finally, this is how the four definitions are. Brahmanas, Kshadriyas, Vaishyas, and Sudras. This is how the definitions are. They are coming from one's nature, one's inherent nature. Let's understand it in a little more detail. We'll use Gita. Bhagavad Gita chapter 18 has all the shlokas that we need. It says, Brahmana Kshadriya Visham, Sudranam Chaparantapa, Karmani Pravibhaktani, Swabhava Prabhavaihi Gunaihi. He says the work that each one of them must do is contingent on their sobhava. And that sobhava is coming out of their guna. So that's why this guna, the three gunas, finally bring a certain sort of a sobhava in me. And Krishna says that sobhava must be linked to whether you, are, you should be a brahmana or a kshadriya or a vaishya or a shudra. That's what uh, he is saying here. And now he says, those definitions, these de definitions are extremely important. He says, he now says, who is a Brah Brahmana? Shamo damas tapas shaucham, kshantihi arjavam evacha, jnana vijnanam astikyam, brahma karma sobhavajam. It says, you, Brahmana is one who have Shama, which is a lot of sensory control and control of the mind. Dhamma, again it talks about uh, sensory control and that is the control of the mind. Shama is control of the mind, Dhamma is the control of the sensory organs. Shaucham, absolute purity in mind, external purity and internal purity. Kshantihi, Kshantihi is uh, highly accommodative. You should be able to accommodate everything in life. Arjavam, straightforwardness, Ruj Bhava. That's why Arjuna is called Arjuna because it is Ruj. His arrows always go straight. Arjava is straightforwardness. Okay. And then Jnana Vijnanam Astikyam. There is so much of uh, deep passion only on knowledge related matters. Nothing else. These are the attributes of a Brahmana. So uh, somebody who has it is a Brahmana. 
not somebody who has a birth certificate uh, called Brahmin. I will come to this Brahmin versus Brahmana later. I, so far, I have never used the word Brahmin. I am using only a word Brahmana. Please note that. I am defining a Brahmana, not a Brahmin. Kshadriya. Shauryam Tejaha Dritihi Darkshyam Yuddecha Apalayanam Danam Ishwara Bhavascha Kshatram Karma Subhavajam. Shauryam, you should have that prowess. You should have that desire to drive and make things happen. Tejas, you should radiate with energy and power and all that. Dhriti, steadfastness. I will not give up that easily. I will go after it and then get it done. Darkshyam, executional excellence. It's called Darkshyam. Yuddecha apalayanam. Yuddha means not necessarily fight. It means when challenges are put forth in front of Shadriya, he is not going to give up that easily. He will say, I'll fight uh, to the end and find out how to solve this problem. Dhanam, your ability to give, you should have the pleasure of giving. Dhanam, Ishwara Bhavam, you should feel that fe feeling of leadership. Right? That, uh, that you, you know, Ishwara Bhava. Ishwara Bhavascha, Kshatram Karma Subhavajam. These are the attributes, again, not by birth certificate, we are talking about attributes. So for Brahmana and Shadriya, we have only defined attributes, nothing else. If anybody has this, they become a Brahmana or a Shadriya is what is being told here. Whereas when it came to Shudra and Vaishya, it is not attributes, it is only actions. If people are doing this, 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 they are called Vaishya. If people are doing this, 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 they are called Shudra. It is, it is mentioned like that. Krishi, Gorakshanam, Vanijyam, Vaishya Karma. You know, agriculture, taking care of the cattle, and Vanijya, which is uh, trade. So today, instead of Krishi, we would have told you know, Krishi and uh, Go Rakshana are, you know, at that time, agriculture is prosperity. Point we are saying is anything which is required to have prosperity of wealth and wealth creation, who is uh, engaged in it all the time and growing the wealth, he is a Vaishya. Then, Paricharyatmakam Karma Shudrasyapi Subhavajam. Taking instructions and uh, doing work very well. And such people and doing work who is able to easily take uh, uh, action, you know, instructions and provide uh, work as per instruction, they are called Shudras. So these two are by duties, the other two are by attributes. I mean, this is so, so interesting. Today, you go to a corporate and find out how do they write their skill requirements and so on. For top management, they don't write, he should type, uh, you know, you should speak like this or he should type 100 words per minute, nothing like that. He talks about what kind of a person, what kind of values and capabilities he should bring from a, as a person. Whereas at a lower level, they will talk about skill oriented. You should be able to do this. You should be able to, you know, create so much of record. You should be able to get so much of uh, uh, market share, so many uh, calls you should be able to uh, attend every day. So at a lower level, it is action and duty oriented. At a higher level, it is some uh, larger passion and skills and so on. That is how Krishna has developed and define today people uh, you know in in hr they do only the same thing at lower level they de describe differently and the higher level they de describe differently 